Welcome to my view from the piano bench. Straight ahead into the wood. <laughs> Every Wednesday night here on my Joel Snow's YouTube channel at 7 p.m. I share my perspective on making music, some of my experiences and thoughts and possibly insights. Do I have them? I don't know. But I know there are those of you who watch this and like to watch this, and that encourages me to keep going. Also encouraging uh, is the support that I receive from some of you. Thank you very much. The link to the support page of my website takes you to some options, and I have a unique take on the Patreon if you wanted to take a look at that. Most importantly, thank you that you are here. So I have titled tonight, In Love, with Swing. And I use that title because it is the title of my very first First Friday with Joe Holt show at the Mainstay this coming Friday of this week. February 4th, I think? I should have looked at the calendar. But this is a brand new series instituted by our new director, Matt Milnick. Uh, he came on board toward the end of last year and he inherited the programming that was remaining that year and he has set up all the programming going forward and immediately he offered me this monthly series which is tremendous it's kind of the continuation of mainstay mondays but not every week and once a month is ideal it's what i was hoping for and didn't think was going to happen until matt came and i'm going to get to partner with Largely regional guest artists, some national, some local, uh, and have a different theme and do a different kind of music on a genre hop a little bit, as much as I can, from month to month. But I wanted to start in my wheelhouse, and in the wheelhouse of a lot of the Mainstay audience. The Mainstay is uh, known historically for being perhaps primarily a jazz venue. There were some who would argue that, but it's probably fair to say that the mainstay is known far and wide, at least historically, uh, as a place for jazz. And the more historic, classic, uh, Great American Songbook era jazz, primarily. And that's what's being represented here with two of my musical friends and comrades and mischief makers. Amy Shook and Cody Level. Hmm, I say mischief maker. It applies possibly to one more than the other, maybe. I'll let you figure it out. But the other can surprise me from time to time. Uh, now, that theme uh, is for Valentine's Day. Well, for this month of February, not for Valentine's Day. But I've kind of discovered that as a, as a general kind of theme, Valentine's is not the strongest necessarily uh, because some people do feel excluded by that. So I wanted to touch that without grabbing it too hard. So in contrast to the Mainstay Monday shows I did, where I just had a guest artist and we went, I'm going to theme these shows and... That's why we get in love with swing for the month of February. Uh, I'll talk more about Amy and Cody in a minute. But the idea of in love with swing kind of defines me too. And it's something I never really understood in this particular way until recent years. You've heard me, if you've heard me before, possibly recount the story of how I discovered jazz. I think I was 10 years old and I was listening to a radio program on Sunday nights that was in a city, I don't know, 20, 30 miles from my house and the reception wasn't great. Some nights I couldn't get it. I was very sad. Often I could though and I would listen to it in bed and stay awake as long as I could listening to this very happy music that I didn't know what it was. Uh, I kind of knew the word jazz applied to it, and I would call it old-time jazz. And then one night, I heard the word mentioned 
Dixieland, and that's all I needed. <laughs> I think I was 10 years old. I walked up to the local 7-Eleven, which was up the street, and it had a display of LPs. They actually sold records at 7-Eleven. And the only thing I had to go on was the word Dixieland, and I saw the Dukes of Dixieland, and that was my first record that I bought, I think. Uh, and later on, I got more context about it, but that's kind of, kind of how it started. Oh, and our board president of the mainstay, Dave Robinson, is a, uh, an authority on historic jazz. And he has a radio program on a local FM station, uh, an NPR satellite. Uh, it's actually out of our local high school. WKHS, but they run NPR programming much of the day, but then they have local programming in the evenings. So my friend Dave has a radio show. He did a serious F, a serious satellite, or maybe it's not so serious. Maybe it was kind of frivolous. I don't know, but he did a, a radio thing back in the day, but this is this local station, but WKHS radio, I think, dot com. But just remember those call letters because you can listen live on Sunday nights from 8 to 10. His show is called Jazz Gumbo. This show that I listened to way back in the day in like 1970 is kind of of the, of the same ilk. And so I'm sure, although I don't remember any specific tunes, that I would have heard a tune like this.
we go. A little Basin Street Blues. That's kind of right out of the Dixieland, or now we say Trad Jazz uh, world. Uh, and those who are Trad Jazz aficionados, and Dave Robinson for sure, if you're watching this, well, I would imagine anyway, uh, you're probably saying, Dukes of Dixieland couldn't have done better. No disparaging, but it was kind of like commercialized, you know, white music. Uh, and looking back on it, it was really just more old-fashioned swinging jazz in a way. You know, not a tuba player, but a bass player it laid it down in four, and it was just r really swinging stuff. But the word that I had was Dixieland, and the music that I played uh, when I discovered this in my piano lessons was ragtime. So I was really like set up to come in older in the stylistic spectrum than my wheelhouse has turned out to be. But a lot of that music can and does like really, really swing, uh, even if it's an old tune, or at least you can you can make it swing. Let's see what I can do. nothing if not speeding up <laughs> and I guess I tried to impose swinging on that you know could have been a two beat the whole way I could have if I slowed it down and of course I could also play more accurately down there but the, the point I'm making is that I was really happy playing that older music, particularly when those uh, Madiri boys plied me with uh, 
the Benny Goodman Trio Records when I was 14 years old. And that's what brought me in. And that's why I started listening to that and then Fats Waller. Uh, but what I think was really touching my heart was that swinging stuff, even though I didn't know it was happening, or at least even if I didn't know, know it was happening. Uh, just good swinging stuff, and maybe this one will be a little more solid. <laughs> seem to stop a little musical diarrhea no I didn't say that <laughs> little C jam blues which I and a lot of people as far as piano goes associate with Oscar Peterson in fact I sort of you know copied a couple of the licks and I never copy anything but that uh, I will take some Oscar licks and play with them to try to not emulate his technique. The guy's got, you know, ridiculous technique 10 times as much as I do. But what I really connect to is that sense of swing and that sense of... Right? That, that sense of just soul in all the notes. And no matter how many notes he played, they all had that wonderful soul. And I think that was the little break that 
though that note right there that my uh, jazz instructor back at the time had uh, given me on cassette tape. I was trying to come up with a little montage of musical examples to, to play for a seminar or something I was doing. And I wasn't super familiar with Oscar yet, uh, but that little piece from CJM Blues, it was just like a minute before it faded away. And I think I wore out the cassette tape. Not listening to Oscar's 50 zillion notes. Actually, that can get annoying after a while, especially when there's just the same patterns and he's showing off, you know, and he can. But that sense of swinging, let's see if I can remember that like again. Now I'm playing. Right? Uh, hopefully I can convey a little bit of that, that drive, you know. Because I guess I'm in love with swing. And it is the month of February, so we should be in love with something. Right? Okay, fine. Uh, when I heard Oscar Peterson, man, uh, I was... I only saw him live once. I saw him because I went to see Ella Fitzgerald, who I was actually more aware of, at the Valley Forge Music Fair. Uh, those local to Philadelphia, we remember that theater and around. I wondered if people got seasick playing it. And Oscar was the opener for, for Ella. And man, by the time Oscar was finished, I was so exhausted. And I had all sorts of explanations for it, including at the time a theological explanation, which, which I still run with. And I'm not going to get into that. But the real bottom line, as I look back at it now, is that just touched my heart so deeply that I was changed uh, by, by that experience, that one experience of hearing Oscar live. And, and I think it was the essence of that that I was hearing in the triad jazz, just, to, just the, good, the good swinging stuff. So I could speculate what would have happened had I not been plied with Benny Goodman Trio featuring Teddy Wilson and Fats Waller and really early stuff like that records when I was a teenager, I was very receptive to. But what if I had just listened to a ton of Oscar then? What would have changed? Would I have not come into uh, the earlier styles? Uh, you could say I'm a, I'm a stride player. I'm reluctant to call myself that because I lack some of the depth of that. And it, uh, uh, as far as the, the, the historic vocabulary or the repertoire of it. And I can be a little bit disjointed at very fast tempos. But, you know, the, the, apparently with some I have a reputation of being a, a decent stride player. I have a reviewer quote on my website when you go to my testimonials page i think uh, th that states that and you know listening to the fats waller stuff like i did more than the stuff that came before it i mean like willie the lion and, uh, jelly roll morton and uh oh my goodness james p johnson uh but i wonder if i would have basically just skipped that and and just gone right to the you know, the borderline bebop era swinging stuff. But I don't know. That's just speculation. I'm very glad I had all the exposures to things I did. Uh, so a little stride. Actually, no, I'm, I'm very glad because the idea of really developing my left hand was not something that comes from the Oscar Peterson camp. He had a good left hand, but uh, wasn't really, you know, a stride guy. So let's just see what happens.
Sesame Street song. One of these things just doesn't belong here. <laughs> but there we go. It's my Tourette's. Um, you know what happened? You know, I said, what? Uh, I wound up quoting like the intro to In the Mood. <laughs> Which didn't exist when Fats Waller played Even Out of Mischief Now. But it's just like me to mix everything all up. But it occurs to me while I'm playing that it would probably be good if I would talk a little bit about the difference between stride and swing in a, in a rhythmic context. So why I think the idea of speculating what would have happened if I wasn't exposed to stride first is kind of pointless because it's a natural place for me to come in after playing ragtime music in my piano lessons. <laughs> if you read the reviews that are linked on my website, uh, referred to the idea of stride piano, I mean, yeah, stride piano as industrial strength ragtime. Uh, I like the guy's review, but I disagree with that, with that comment. Uh, uh, stride piano is certainly compared to ragtime in the sense of it being what we call a two-beat feel. as opposed to a four beat feel. That would be swinging. Uh, but the... Or the entertainer. So it's like oompa, 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 one. The pulse is on one and three, which <laughs> you never want to admit. But I mean, the bass notes are on one, one, one and three. Uh, and other examples of two-piece styles would be polkas. Or marches that could be in two, four, or six, eight. music is actually syncopated march music. You can, you can march down the street playing ragtime music. So the, the swinging feel is an evolution of that. And in the early 30s, mid 30s, uh, if you look at old big band records and the personnel in, in them, Whoever was playing tuba starts switching over to bass, the, the upright bass. Because uh, tuba was kind of your main instrument for the two-beat feel, but doesn't really walk and swing so well. You can do it, and I play with tuba players who do. But the uh, the upright bass, there's your there's your swinging thing. And that's when it all changed. And by the time like the Goodman Band came along in the mid-late 30s, Everything was swinging. Of course, his name, nickname was the King of... Yeah, swing. I, I heard you. All right. So, speaking of, of swing, I've got two really like-minded comrades coming to the mainstay on Friday night. So, you see this on Wednesday, so it'll be uh, 
two nights after. And if you are local enough, by the way, to come to the mainstay, and some of you, you know, are not, but if you can get over here for this show or some other show, whether or not it's one of my shows, but you're going to know I'm going to be there the first Friday of every month, uh, you got to come to the mainstay. It's, it's, it's one of, if not the, and I'm biased, I'm going to say the most coolest, special, most wonderful, intimate space performance venue on the planet. It's just super cool. Uh, you got to come. So I have Amy Shook and Cody Level being with me. Uh, Amy on bass and Cody on clarinet, saxophone, and some wonderful vocals as long as his voice holds up. I talked to him uh, a few days ago, and after a recording session that we were involved, uh, he and I and many others were involved in, and if you follow my Facebook page, you would have saw me post about it. It wound up being a Christmas Day radio broadcast. Uh, and we were wonderfully catered by this uh, Italian restaurant down there. He got food poisoning that night. He was the only one. So I don't think we can blame the, blame the caterer. I don't know what happened. But he said he kind of lost his singing voice. And even his speaking voice for a while after that. So it's coming back, hopefully... We're going to have some wonderful Chet Baker-esque My Funny Valentine kind of vocals. I might play that tune, actually. Uh, should I play that now? No, because I'm going to get myself out of my little space here. So one thing that the three of us have in common, although different stripes of, this, of it, but we all have significant big band experience. Uh, me is primarily with the Madeira Brothers big band, but back in the day, you know, uh, the day for people my age doing that music, like 30, what is it? Wow. 30 to 40 years ago. What's this year? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, you know, the Madeira Brothers and I, in three years, will hit 50 years since we formed our first group. So 47 years now. And we are talking seriously, I think, uh, about putting together a 50 year reunion little tour. <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool? But back between like 30 and 40 years ago, their big band was working a lot. Uh, and a lot of the charts they play, I mean, in addition to charts that they wrote and had wrote for them and custom charts, a lot of the stock charts too of the other big bands. So I was familiar with them. Uh, Amy Shook, man, she plays with everyone who wants a swinging, singing bass player. But one of the big bands she's involved with uh, is the Diva Jazz Orchestra. Uh, so an all female uh, big band's been around for a long time. And a little spinoff of that in more recent years is the Three Divas Jazz Trio. Amy gets a lot of mileage out of that. It's the hardest driving bullet train little rhythm section trio you're ever going to hear. Uh, and 3D is how she abbreviates it. But it, I guess three-dimensional does work too, doesn't it? Uh, and then Cody's story, some of you know. Uh, he's half my age. Er. <laughs> Uh, and when he came out of college, he soon found himself on the road with the Glenn Miller Band for five years, or the better part of five years, which at the time was the last remaining full-time uh, on-the-road ghost band, uh, which is not the case now, post-COVID, uh, but they are working again. So uh, we're going to hit the big band stuff to, to some degree, and it's going to be fun. Uh Let's see, what was I going to do? Oh, yeah, somebody's theme song, the band that Cody was with.
Moonlight Serenade was uh, the theme song for Glenn Miller. Uh, of course, there's all these famous Glenn Miller tunes. I'll play one. <laughs> that tune. Oh my goodness. Uh, I think my thoughts got away from me. In my notes here, I was going to make a, a mention of swing bands and sweet bands. Uh, and of course, I wasn't around then, but you know, I've read enough and listened enough to know that there were different camps in the big band era, just like there are different camps in uh, pop music you know, currently and historically. And what I kind of like in the sweet bands and the swing bands too, I think some might say, what are you thinking, Joe? Or smoking or whatever. Would be back in uh, like the late 70s when disco came along. Uh, I graduated high school in 78. And I would come back every year for a few years to accompany uh, the high school chorus for their concerts. And the uh, choral director would, would tell me, like, it was interesting, and I got out when I did, because when disco hit, it pretty much split the school in half. And they were like, you know, tussles and little wars and little tensions between the rock kids and the disco kids. And, uh, you know, if you were like a space alien uh, coming down and looking at, like, a disco band and a rock band, and you're, you're seeing... Similar instruments, you're seeing a rhythm section with a drummer, you're hearing beats go boom, 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 you know. Uh, and it's like, okay, this is loud, popular music, but, you know, actually it was quite, quite different, you know. And completely different cultures around around those two experiences. 
So with big bands, you had uh, the same looking kind of band, but you had like, you know, Benny Goodman and uh, Tommy Dorsey and Count Basie and Duke Ellington and going in that direction. And then you had like Kay Kaiser and Sammy Kay and Guy Lombardo, which was a whole nother bag. Uh, and Glenn Miller, the reason I bring all this up is, and Glenn Miller is an interesting example and possibly not the best one to talk about swing because he was kind of uniquely positioned to be kind of both. You know, if it, it, it was a sweet band, it was a, you know, a Charlie Barnett, uh, this is the wrong idea band. <laughs> uh, that was a recording that Charlie Barnett made to uh, spoof Sammy Kay. So if you can find that online, it's pretty funny. Uh, Charlie Barnett, the wrong idea in the 30s, 36, 38. Uh, listen, folks, throughout the land, when you hear this kind of band, we don't think that they're so grand. This is the wrong idea. The kind of band on which we frown is this kind because they bring you down. They think they're hot because they go to town. This is the wrong idea. Don't play it good, just play it cute and make it Rudy Tooty Toot Toot. Doesn't do any good to get hep, so swing and sweat with Charlie Barnett. <laughs> good night. I don't think I've ever recited those words in my life. And of course, never sung them. I didn't sing them then. But <laughs> I guess I listened to that a lot. In fact, I made part of that my, uh, of course, now you'd say ringtone, you know, but this is back in like the 70s. I, I used it for my answering machine recording. I played it in the background. You know, here's some beautiful music for you. This is the wrong idea. Yeah, yeah so, uh, yeah, that's where your disco and rock wars or the swing and the, the swing and the sweet bands. Uh, so I think I'm going to play another. No, I'm going to go to a swing band. I'm going to go to Benny Goodman. Uh, which is really where I came in. Uh, and Benny Goodman would uh, have a lot of success with his small group. Uh, I don't know that he was the first to feature a small group. He might have been. But yeah, I think so. And then other bands would follow. But he had the Benny Goodman Trio and the Benny Goodman Quartet. Excuse me. First with Teddy Wilson, which was the first openly integrated professional band group and then brought in Lionel Hampton who played vibes uh, and then when Gene Krupa was, was out Lionel Hampton would suffer Gene Krupa on on drums uh, so this is more coming from the quartet bag I'm sure that there's a big band arrangement of it too but just an old swing here tune called Lady Be Good <laughs>
Oh my goodness. Oh sweet and lovely lady be good. A little good in classic. Uh, so this all started an hour-ish or almost ago with me talking about the uh, Dixieland or trad jazz that I listened to and suggesting, which is actually the first time I've ever thought about it today, putting this together, that what I was really drawn to were the swinging sounds, not necessarily the old uh, trad jazz stuff, although I appreciate it and love it. Uh, and maybe that's why I've never had the push and the desire and the follow through to actually go to New Orleans. Uh, those who know me know I haven't been and it's like, what? Why? What? Huh? Uh, but now I'm telling you, I'm admitting it. My culture is uh, devoid of something that should be there. So someday I'll maybe go down. So I'll play one more tune, a little trad classic. And do I know what it means to miss New Orleans? Well, technically, no. Huh. Oh, my friend Philip sees this. He's shaking his head at me right now, aren't you, Philip? Yes, you are.
love with swing. I confess, I am. <laughs> so, uh, thank you for being here. And if you can come to the mainstay, by all means, uh, there may be some uh, video that I can share with you if you can't come. I'm going to find out that tomorrow. Find that out tomorrow. I'm warning my thirds. I mean, turning my words around. Oops, sorry. Spit a lunarism that's coming out of me. Uh oh, I'm getting tired. Tired. Get it? Yeah. Stop, Joe. <laughs> See you tomorrow for piano for my friends. Thank you for being here. See you next week for another edition of whatever this is. My view from the piano bench. I can see it. Uh, no, I can't. See you later. Timber.